So in this video, we're going to think a little bit about spectrophotometers and how you might use information from a spectrometer uh, to find out the biological concentration of a molecule. So spectrophotometers work on a relatively simple basis. So what you have with a spectrophotometer is you prepare a cuvette uh, of your sample. So a cuvette is just a sort of small plastic square uh, test tube, effectively. And then what you do, uh, so you've got your sample in there. Uh, so let's just hold that in. Um, and then what you do is you shine a light through the sample. So you shine um, a beam of light, which is called the incident light, uh, which we refer, refer to as I0. You shine that through the sample, then if your sample contains a molecule that absorbs light, the amount of light that you get out will be less than the amount that you put in, and then there's a little detector to work out that. So we have the incident light going in, and then we have the transmitted light. Which is I. And the ratio between those two gives you the absorbance. So the machine is comparing the light that goes in with the light that comes out, and it gives you an absorbance value, which it calculates in this way. So absorbance is A. Um, So absorbance is A. So A is calculated as the log to base 10 of the incident light, I0, divided by the transmitted light, which is I. Okay, so let's have an example of this. Let's imagine um, that you, uh, the light that shines through, um, so incident light will define as 100%, okay, so 100% of the light went in, okay, and at the detector, only 1% of the light that was shined in got detected by there, so 99% of it has uh, been absorbed. So uh, to work out the absorbance, so we've got then 100 over 1, so that gives requires us to find the log to base 10, of 100, so that would give us an absorbance of 2, okay, because um, if you uh, remember then um, 10 to the power 2 is 100, so therefore 2 is log to the base 10 of 100, so um, Log to the base 10 is kind of the opposite of having the power on the exponential, okay? Um, so uh, log to the base 10 of 100 is 2, okay? So that's how the machine calculates the absorbance. But actually, that reading on the machine is what you get um, So that number there is the number that you would get on the spectrophotometer. It does all of that maths for you, so you don't need to worry very much about that maths, but that's just to show you where it comes from, because that's the number that you'd read directly off the spectrophotometer. So that's how the spectrophotometer works. So we now need to think about determining the concentration of a molecule, okay, and concentration is usually given in square brackets as a notation. Okay? So there are two different ways that we can use the spectrophotometer to determine concentration. So the first way is to construct a calibration curve. Uh, so this is good for molecules that are indirectly um, result in absorbance. So 
So this might be where you have a dye that reacts with the molecule that you're interested in, uh, and it's the dye that you're measuring, and then you're kind of using it to infer what's happening with your molecule. So if it's indirect, then you'd use set up a calibration curve. So that would look like this. So we'd have the concentration of the molecule that we're interested in, and then we'd have the absorbance. And then we'd start uh, with some known um, uh, chemical. So we'd make up maybe a serial dilution of the chemical that we were interested in. And then we'd plot out, we'd measure it, its absorbance, and we'd plot out a graph that might look something like that. So it's non-linear. Um, and then we'd uh, construct this calibration curve. So we do that for our known chemical first. And then what we do is we'd have an unknown sample. So this might be the biological extract that we're actually trying to measure. So what we would do is to measure its absorbance in the spectrophotometer. So we get a value that was there. And then we'd use that calibration curve to write, uh, to read across to there. So that would be our estimated concentration. Okay, so we'd start with some knowns so we know exactly how much chemical there is. Uh, we'd plot out a graph of the knowns and then we'd compare that to the unknown sample. So that might be the biological sample. Um, and we compare the two using a calibration curve so we could estimate the concentration. Okay, so that's one way that we can use the spectrophotometer. The other way is to use something called Beer's Law. And this is good for molecules that directly absorb light. So this is useful for DNA, for RNA, uh, it's useful for chlorophyll, it's useful for NADH, which is a carrier molecule in metabolism. So let's think about NADH, for example. So Beer's law states that A equals C times epsilon times L. So that's the, that's the equation. So what are all of these bits in the equation? Well, A is absorbance at a particular wavelength. Uh, C is the concentration. Uh, absorbance has no units. Concentration is in molar, which uh, you might remember is moles per liter. So that's the that's the unit of concentration. L is the path length. So that's how far the light has shone through. So that's actually this distance here is how big is the cuvette. And that's nearly always one centimetre. It's very unusual to use a cuvette that's not a centimetre thick. So that just leaves epsilon. Uh, and that is what we call the extinction coefficient. So that's basically um, a measure of how absorbent the molecule itself is. So if you've just got a pure solution of that molecule, how much light would it absorb? So different molecules have a different extinction coefficient, which is effectively just a conversion factor to get us from absorbance to concentration. Okay, so those are our um, terms are in our equation. The extinction coefficient has a very weird unit, uh, which is moles per centimetre. Uh, which is a bit weird, but that's what's needed for the, to make the maths work out. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, so let's say that you're interested in measuring NADH. Um, NADH has an extinction coefficient of 6220 uh, moles per centimetre. 
And let's say that you measure the absorbance to be 0.34 on your spectrophotometer. Okay. So I can rearrange this equation because I know the absorbance. I'm trying to find out the concentration. So if I rearrange that equation, it will be C equals A over epsilon times L. Okay. Um, so I can now substitute my numbers in. So A uh, is 0.34. Epsilon is 6220 times by L uh, is the path length, which is one centimeter. So if I do that, I get an answer of 5.47 times 10 to the minus 5 molar, which is moles per litre. Um, that's a slightly funny way of expressing that. What a biologist would do is to express that in terms of micromolar. So um, if you remember, micromolar is 10 to the minus 6 molar, so it's a million times uh, smaller. So that in micromolar would be 54.7 micromoles per litre is the same thing as micromolar. So... Uh, we've got two different ways of using our spectrophotometer. It's all based on the light beam passing through uh, the sample. The machine uh, does this calculation to get your absorbance for you. So you'd read that absorbance value there. Okay? And then you can either use a calibration curve or Beer's law in order to work out the concentration of your molecule. So if the molecule directly absorbs light, then you'd be using Beer's law. So that's good for things like NADH or chlorophyll. If it indirectly absorbs, so that might be something like a Bradford assay or something like that, uh, then you'd have to use the calibration curve.